Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to the special OAA Now football preview show. I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger the Dragons Insider, blogger of Inside the OAA, and one of the hosts of Between Terramina's on Ori Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those hearing us on the local voice, also watching us on Ori Neighborhood Television, and also around YouTube. We got a lot. We got... We got the um, OA, um, we got the blue this week, followed by the white in next week, and then the red in two weeks. Of course, um, Harper Woods will be on the white edition starting next week. Of course, there are nine teams in the blue this year. There's six in the um, white and six in the red. So here, so he, let's start off with the um, blue division. Obviously, we got the Yellow Jackets of Auburn Hills, Avondale. It's been a team that's been nine and nine the last two years, and that's something that's on Avondale like. So here is Avondale coach Corey Bell at the podium at Media Day at Rochester High School. All right, guys, um, we're super excited to be here. Um, I'm Corey Bell. This is my third year as a head coach at Avondale High School. Um, going back, you know, a year and a half ago, everything that we went through as a state and as a, as a high school um, affiliation of not knowing when we were going to play football, if we were going to play football, and what that was going to look like, I think I speak for all of us, that so we're just super excited to be back. So this is kind of like Coach Bernie said, the, the culminating event this summer. Of, we got to go back to our seven on sevens. We got to take these guys to some camps. Um, so we're super, super excited to finally be underway here with, with high school football the way that it should be. Um, for Avondale specifically, you know, last year we uh, we graduated 23 seniors. So we're going to be young this year. Um, we got a lot of guys that are going to have an opportunity to step up um, and make some plays for us. Um, in my time being here, this is the biggest uh, team that we've had in the program. Uh, we've got over 85 kids in our program, which is well above what we were at last year and the year before. So we're very excited about what we're doing this summer. Um, these guys have taken the coaching that we've given them all summer and absolutely ran with it. Uh, they're going to get some opportunities to continue to grow and make this team their team. Um, and we are very, very excited for the season. So I'm going these guys introduce themselves. Uh, Jake Herzog, I'm a senior, like quarterback, free safety. Sean Robinson, uh, Jr., uh, O-line, D-line. D'Angelo Harris, I play receiver and safety. Kamani Fox, uh, O-line, D-line. All right, guys, good luck to everybody. Stay healthy. When looking at the Yellow Jackets, we know that other success in the past, um, postseason perennial power, um, last few years, it hasn't really been that way. Um, so I, I mean, I talked to um, Avondale coach um, Corey Bell. Um, had an interview with him after um, the media day interview um, to talk about the Yellow Jackets. I got Avondale coach Corey Bell here. Of course, um, of course, you have a very good quarterback coming back in Jake Herzog. Um, talk about how his development been and how it's been the team been this summer. Yeah, he's a uh, he's a complete quarterback. He's the guy that we can hand the keys to. Um, he's going to put us in the right position, whether we're running the ball, throwing the ball. He knows what we want to do. He is truly an extension of me out there on the field and our offensive staff out on the field. Um, you know, not only is he a great quarterback, he's an all-league safety last year. Uh, so he's going to be the guy uh, for us on both sides of the ball, and we're excited. Talk about, obviously, the um, – the last few years, you know what I mean? Like, you know, Avondale in the past, they've had really, really good teams, you know what I mean? And then like, um, so talk about that a little bit. Yep, we've, uh, Avondale's always had good athletes. So for us, it's putting that next piece together, you know, not going out and now we got to work harder than other teams. We we have the athletes, now can we outwork some of these teams that, that truly come in and work hard and compete? And we've um, we've set the bar high for these guys and they've, they've absolutely ran with it this summer and we're excited for, for what we can do this year. What are the expectations here, Coach? Uh, the compete for an OAA Blue Championship. Thank you real much, Coach. The weakness of Avondale this year is going to be the running back spot. Obviously, of course, um, anytime you lose a guy like David Hallman, um, that does hurt you. Um, so that is a huge loss for Avondale. Um, really interesting how they're going to decide that running back spot. Um, other than that, everything else they got pretty much set. Um, a little concerned about their depth, even though they got 85 kids in the program, but just a little bit of concern with their depth and program strength. Um, the schedule is not an easy thing for Avondale either. Of course, they have two games on the road to start the year. They go to Troy. That is not an easy game for them. Um, and then they go to Holly, of course. I mentioned the Troy game. Forgot to mention the Jersey Trophy on the line. You have Little Brown Jug. Um, and then September 3rd, they go to Holly take on a really good Broncos team. I know the community there in Holly is really, really intense, fired up. Um, so that'll be really, it'll be really interesting for Avondale in that matchup there. 
Um, September 10th, they go, they host Pontiac. Um, that's going to be a really interesting game there. Um, Avondale had Pontiac way the last few years. Um, and then, of course, September 17th is that game of Blue Beale Hills, of course, last season. Um, that was a complete shocker. Um, Avondale going into Blue Beale Hills and just demolishing them 37 to 9. That was a really big head scratcher there. Um, and then week five, week five through seven on the road, um, they go to Ferndale. Um, oddly enough, in that series, um, Av the road team has won the game in that in that series. Um, even though last year Ferndale won that game over Avondale. Um, and then October 1st, they go to Hurley to take on Berkeley. Um, that's not going to be an easy game for them. Um, and then October 8th, go in the Ravens' nest, take on Royal Oak. Um, that'll be really intriguing, obviously. Of course, Avondale and Royal Oak, we know that rivalry there. October 15th, they take on Farmington at home, of course, um, at Dick By Field. That's going to be really interesting there. Um, and then they close out the year October 22nd with Troy Athens on their home field. So. A lot to look forward to for Avondale. I still got some questions, though, at running back. I still got some questions with their, um, with some of their experience, of course. Um, for me, this team, they've got the potential to do very well. But they, I mean, I know they were second, pick second in the coaches' poll. But there are there's some dangers when I look at Avondale, obviously. So this is a team I'm really, really interested in looking at this year with the Yellow Jackets. And I know a lot of fans at Dick By Field look forward to seeing Avondale play this season. Um, let's go from the Yellow Jackets to the Bears of Berkeley. Of course, last season, 3-0 start, um, and then things kind of fell, fell, fell south a little bit. Of course, 1-4 and four the last. Um, they, went, they finished 5-3, and three, obviously. Of course, they actually had a 4-0 start, but had that really tough loss to um, Bloomfield Hills that really started their um, little, little downward thing, but but Berkeley's got a lot of high expectations here, so here is Berkeley coach Sean Shields at the podium. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Rochester for having us out here today. Um, you know, we missed this last season, and uh, glad that we get to come out here and show off our boys a little bit and promote the OAA. Um, we're excited for this season. Uh, right now, we are returning 27 of our players off of last year's roster. Uh, we're sitting at about 53 kids on varsity alone right now. Um, so numbers are really picking up for us. We're uh, looking to hopefully be able to do something with those numbers and, and uh, have a positive season after last year. Um, one of the biggest things for us is four-year guys in our program three years ago uh, finished the season with four guys that played all four years throughout the program. We currently have 18 that uh, will be going to their fourth year playing Berkeley football. Um, so that's going to be huge for us, just experience and keeping kids in the program. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hand the mic over here to the boys real quick. Let them introduce themselves. Henry Huntington, senior uh, linebacker. Sean McKenzie, guard and D tackle. Ryan Krause, safety and receiver. Uh, Lev Meshnikov, O line, D line. Ben Maurice, receiver and corner. Uh, our first game this year is against Bloomfield uh, last year, which is a uh, pretty big thriller in overtime. We came up short. Hopefully we get some fans out to come watch us this year and all the full stands and everything. Our first home game is week two against Farmington. Uh, come out and watch us. Hopefully we can put on a show. Thanks to Rochester again. Appreciate it. Berkeley's got a lot of experience back, led, of course, by quarterback Zach Maurice. Um, last year he had six passing touchdowns, 465 yards. Brandon Peacher's back at running back. Um, and then um, combo player Jake Domowski is another player to keep a really good, close eye on this year for Berkeley. Um, this team's got a lot of experience. Um, they got a lot of depth. They do got some questions, though, coming into the year. So, And I've talked to Coach Shields frequently on the podcast and also – I had an interview with Coach Sean Shields as well. Of course, I got the coach at Berkeley here, Coach Sean Shields. We, of course, re frequent podcast guest here, um, obviously. Um, we talked about the Maurice brothers, obviously, Zach and um, Ben, obviously. Um, talk about Mr. Domowski a little bit here for, for you guys. Going to do everything for you guys a little bit? Uh, yeah, Jake is, uh, you know, he's our, our number one corner. Going to, you know, in our man coverage of shadow, guys, number one uh, receivers. 
Um, offensively, he's going to be playing in the slot for us. He'll be playing in the backfield for us a little bit. Um, and then he's our kick and punt returner. So uh, Jake's that one kid that he, you know, he's just too valuable for us to take off the field. And uh, got to keep him healthy, but uh, we're excited for the things he's going to be able to do for us this year. Talk about you guys, of course, up front. You know, there are some questions up there. I know you guys got some experience coming back. Um, program strength is a big question mark. We talked about that. Um, so everything going okay there? Uh, yeah, up front, uh, right now we've uh, two of our guys on uh, the, both the offensive and defensive line, Lev uh, Mechnikov and Sean McKenzie, they're both getting a couple offers right now. Um, you know, our center, Donovan McKeague and uh, David Rollins Jr., those are all four starters coming back. Um, and uh, we're, we're replacing uh, Cody Wrigley at the other tackle spot with uh, um, Isaac, uh, I'm forgetting his last name, uh, <laughs> anyway, I, Isaac Dawkins. And, uh, you know, he was the horse of the JV team last year. He's looking good. He's put on about 20, 30 pounds, and, you know, he's benching 250. So for a junior, he's looking good. And, you know, we've got 16 guys uh, that are linemen this year, so the depth and the rotation is going to be huge for us, especially against teams that have two-way guys on the line. What is your expectation here, Coach? Uh, like it always is, um, win the blue. Uh, you know, I talked to Coach Royal, and we're, we're both tired of teams coming down from the white and winning the blue. We want a blue team to win this year. That's our goal is to uh, come out and win our league. So, Thank you real much, Coach. Thanks, Amy. Appreciate yep, it. Me too. I am really high on this team when you look at Berkeley, especially with the experience they got coming back. Now, when you look at the schedule, it's really interesting. Of course, he did talk about the uh, matchup week one with Bluefield Hills. That's on the road. Um, last season, I did watch that game on CMN TV, and it was a heck of a game. Um, it ended up... Um, what happened was in that game, of course, it was a block PAT in overtime um, that Blue Bay Hills did, and then they, Blue Bay Hills went down and scored and then converted on their extra win, extra point by um, Sarah Houston. Um, so Berkeley, I know, has been looking forward to that game for a long time. So I'm curious to see how that one's going to go there. Um, September 3rd, Hurley against Farmington. This one's interesting um, because Farmington, we know, has got a lot of experience back, but so does Berkeley. That'll be a real, I think it'll be a really good game down there at Hurley. Um, September 10th, of course, the um, battle for the, um, I, I think they're having a new trophy this year. Of course, it used to be the, um, the it's the Battle of Woodward with Royal Oak, of course. They're doing like a, 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 two, like a new sign this, this year. They're doing like a Catalpa, and then uh, I don't know, I can't remember the um, Royal Oak um, address on my on the tip of my thumb right now um, but that'll be a really interesting matchup between Berkeley Royal Oak. of course those two teams met in the playoffs last year on um, Berkeley won that game um, September 17th this one I think I've been I'm circling right now on the calendar Berkeley at Ferndale this is going to be a real interesting game um, I'm curious to see how that matchup is going to be between um, two rivals of course not far from one another um, That'd be a really good game there. And then September 24th against Troy Athens. That was a really good game last year at Athens. Berkeley ended up winning that game. Um, it was a really tight game there in that one. Um, I expect a, another really tight game with them and Troy Athens this year. Um, October 1st, they are home with Abbeydale. Of course, this is a really interesting matchup there for them. Um, I'm curious to see if the explosive athletes of Abbeydale going up against the um, a very finesse I mean, very um, against a very experienced team like Berkeley has. And then October 8th, they are going to Livonia Clarenceville. Of course, um, last year, I mean, I know Coach Shields has been in the Wayne County, obviously. Of course, Livonia is another Wayne County team a year ago. I mean, another Wayne County team. So I'm curious to see how that matchup is going to be between them and Livonia Clarenceville. Um, October 15th, they are home with Troy at Hurley. Uh, that'll be really interesting there. And then they close out the year October 22nd with Pontiac at the um, new high school, yeah, Pontiac High School. So that'll be really interesting how that's going to be for the Bears. I'm really high on this team. been really excited about this team to keep a very close eye on. They've got a lot of experience coming back. I mean, you will probably see later in the show why I am really high on this football team. Um, so let's go now from Berkeley to Bluefield Hills, of course. Um, Bluefield Hills... Um, They've, it's been a, it was an odd year for them. I mean, like, and um, they do lose their quarterback in Tanner Slavinsky a year ago. Um, so I'm curious to see how Dan Laurie is going to have his team this upcoming season. So here he is at the podium. I'd like to thank uh, Coach Vernon and Rochester for um, hosting this again. Um, 
this is a great opportunity. Um, the upcoming season that uh, we're looking forward to, um, we return our skill guys, a little experience experience in the offensive defensive line, but um, we closed out our, our, our conditioning yesterday, but had a great summer. Um, it was nice to be back to normal. Looking forward to that in the fall as well. And it's one of these special groups that you just love going into Friday night with. Like it's going to be a lot of fun coaching these guys throughout the season and um, seeing where we end up. Um, I'd like each of them to uh, introduce himself. My name is Andrew Spierski. I'm a senior and I'm a receiver in three six. Shane Winter, receiver of safety. Zach Borenstein, senior O line. And these three guys are um, fantastic young men, and I would be proud to have these three guys leading our program for the upcoming season as well. Good luck, everybody, and stay healthy. Bloomfield Hills is seven and eighteen since two thousand eighteen. In the past, they've been, um, and that's very on Bloomfield Hills like. Um, last five games, of course, they gave it up over 185 points. That's rough. So I caught up with Coach Dan Loria about the state of the Blackhawks. Here's my interview with Coach Loria. All right, I got the coach of Bloomley Hills here, Dan Loria. Obviously, of course, last season um, went it ended up well early, but just didn't go out well in the last two games. They outscored 66-23 in those two games. Um, talk about last season a little bit. You know, last, last season overall, I was happy with the kids' performance. Um, with everything they had to go through, you know, I thought we had a great summer, then all of a sudden it stopped. And then we get brought back in again. And, you know, like everybody else, you lose a couple kids due to the pandemic and whatnot. But in the end, they're resilient. That's all I can ask from them It's just show up every day, come to work, work hard, and they did that. So overall, you know, I, I couldn't be happier with with the way they with the way they committed themselves under those circumstances. Talk about your quarterback situation. Of course, you lose Tanner Zelinski, really good quarterback for you guys. I mean, like, so I'm curious to see how your quarterback situation is brewing over there at Bloomfield Hills. So right now, uh, C.J. Jackson will be our guy going into going into starting on Monday, and um, he's uh, he's been working hard, working hard ever really since eighth grade, coming in and and throwing the ball around a little bit. But um, he seems to be very committed, has a good grasp of the offense. Um, we brought him up as a sophomore last year, started on defense, so he was around Tanner, around the offense, practicing with us, so he's got a good hold on it. So um, we do expect some good things from him this year. What are your expectations here, Coach? Um, you know, I think, we should be, I think we should be in the thick of things by the end of the season. Thank you real much, yeah, Coach. Thank you. Take care. Quarterback situation is really concerning with Bloomfield Hills. I mean, this is a team that, you know, last season, of course, with Townsendinsky, of course, I know they played Jackson at quarterback um, in the final two games where they lost both those games. So when I look at the schedule this year, you know, a huge start would be really huge. Um, they open up the year at home at, um, against Berkeley, so that would be a real interesting game there. Um, of course, last season we talked uh, about um, their 35-34 win uh, behind a um, winning PAT from Sarah Houston. Um, that was a huge win for Bloomfield Hills at the time. Um, then September 3rd, they take on Pontiac. Of course, um, the Phoenix. Um, Bloomfield Hills has had their way with Pontiac in the past. Um, so it'll be really interesting there. Um, September 10th, this one's tricky. At Waterford Kettering. I know Coach Bob Chiazza very well. Of course, he used to coach at North Farmington. He also has been around football. So for Bloomfield Hills, don't be surprised that Kettering game is going to be really, really difficult for them um, in that one going out to Waterford to take on the captains. Um, week four, they take on Avondale on September 17th. That's at Dick By Field. Um, we know that they should be motivated after losing last year um, on their home field. They were just embarrassed on their home field a year ago. Um, September 24th, they take on Farmington at home. Of course, it's going to be really interesting there in that one. Um, you know, Bloomfield Hills, Farmington, we know that they've had a nice little rivalry there. Um, October the 1st, they take on Athens on the road. This one's going to be really interesting there. I'm curious to see how um, Bloomfield Hills responds against last season, of course, with a 2013 score. Of course, I know um, I know Coach Keenis loses sleep thinking about that game last season. Of course, the um, Bloomfield Hills end up winning that game there. October the 8th, they take on Ferndale. Um, this will be a really interesting game for them. I think it'll be a real unique game there. October 15th, they take on Royal Oak at Royal Oak at the Raven's Nest. 
Um, that'll be really interesting there. And then they close out the year October 22nd against Troy, the team that knocked off Bloopy Hills from the postseason last year with the 29-14 um, defeat in the first round of the playoffs. So, okay, now we're going to take a break here um, on the special OA Now football preview show, the Blue Edition. Want a habitat home? I love working on my habitat home. Soy dueño de una casa de habitat. My neighbor is a habitat homeowner. Being a habitat homeowner has changed our lives. My mortgage payment for habitat is less than what I paid for rent. Habitat for Humanity of Oakland County currently has homes available with mortgage payments lower than most rent payments. If you or someone you know needs decent and affordable housing, call 248-338-1843 or visit our website at habitatoakland.org. Welcome back to Special OA Now Football Preview Show, the Blue Edition. I'm Sammy Termina here. Um, we got the Falcons of Farmington. Of course, um, Farmington's a team that um, last season had their issues in the white. Um, changed coaches this offseason. Of course, Corey Soroch is now at Wall Lake Western. Um, and enter Coach Jason Albrecht, a Farmington alum. Here he is at the podium. Hi, my name is Jason Albrecht. This is my first year as head coach at Farmington High, eighth year coaching at the high school. Uh, taking over kind of in the winter, you know, it was kind of a, a, a crazy time, but our uh, seniors here and, and a lot of our younger players bought into the after school wage training programs we, we implemented. Uh, that carried over into the summer, had great numbers, you know, and a lot of, uh, you know, brotherhood bonding as, as the younger kids, the freshmen coming in, was able to work with our seniors as well. Uh, we're excited to get into this season and uh, we open up with a, a cross-town rival game, so that's always great. And uh, these are my four seniors we brought here today. Jacob Sanders, senior running back in the slot. Demetri Moore, senior safety in the slot. Jalen Silver, slot safety in the senior. Alex Roberson, linebacker, guard, senior. Uh, we just want to say thank you again to uh, Vernon and Rochester High for having us out. Thank you. Farmington's going to be really interesting. They got a lot of experience coming back. Um, of course, led by quarterback Dominic Pesci um, and Jacob Sanders. So I caught up with Farmington coach um, coach um, Jason Albright. Of course, he's also a, also was on the podcast as well. So here he is with my interview. A couple weeks ago, I had this guy here for media, I mean, on the podcast. Now I have him in person here, Coach Jason Albrecht at Farmington. Um, Coach, obviously, we talked about the um, your quarterback, your um, Dominic Peschel. We talked about Jacob Sanders. Um, any other players that in, that could be huge, huge for you come, going around this year? Yeah, uh, with Pacey and Sanders coming back, we also, uh, also have Jalen Silver, who returned. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a quarterback, and he'll be a little Talking more of us. Yep, yeah, you did. Yep. Um, and not a lot of people know who Keith Nickel is, so that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. And then Dimitri Moore returns. I have uh, a couple linemen that return, both junior seniors. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Alex Roberson, Gavin Miller, and mm -hmm. so you know we return a lot of skill kids and and a handful of lot guys in the line that have playing time. So Liam uh, McCormick Reamer comes back in a couple weeks for us. Will be huge as well. And uh, you know we're just looking forward to uh, keep growing as a team and bonding and getting getting to work here. Obviously, talk about the rivalry with North Farmington. Um, obviously, that's going to be a big matchup. Obviously, week one, um, and then you have Berkeley week two. So those two games are very crucial for you guys. Yeah, you know it's kind of weird that that North isn't a, a league game this year for us because they're, they're in the white, we're in the blue. But you know we're looking forward to the challenge, and you know August 27th is something we've been having our eye on since the uh, uh, schedule was announced. And Berkeley's always been a, a known for being a tough team and physical. And you know again that's the opening of our blue division games, and I'm looking forward to the challenge to uh, go against them on their field and hopefully do what we do. What do you think it takes this year, Coach? I, you know, I just, I, if people ask me, I said, we're going to play smart, tough football. We're going to be, you know, the best well-coached team we can, and we're going to go out and ball out every game. Thank you real much, Coach. Thank you. When you look at Farmington, of course, this could be a very good football team. This could be a very good year for them. Um, looking at the schedule, of course, as I mentioned, the first two games, really tough. We got the uh, Farmington Cup, August 27th. 
taking on, going to Tom Holland Field to take on North Farmington. Um, and then September 3rd, they take on Berkeley. That'll be another interesting game. That'll be at Hurley Field. So two road games off the bat for Farmington. They open up the year at home against Troy Athens on September the 10th. Then they play September 17th against Troy. Um, and then, of course, September 24th, game of Bluefield Hills. Of course, that's going to be really interesting there. October the 1st, they head to the Ravens Nest to take on Royal Oak. Of course, we know that, that history between those two teams. October the 8th, they take on Pontiac. Um, October the 15th, they take on Avondale. And they close out the year on October 22nd, taking on the Eagles of Ferndale. So, for a lot of expectations for Farmington, um, this is going to be a really good football team to keep a really close eye on heading into the year for Farmington. Um, really high expectations for them this year coming down from the white to being in the blue. Um, let's go now from Farmington to Ferndale, of course. Um, Ferndale found their magic from last year a little bit, of course, winning them um, going four and three a year ago. So here is Ferndale coach Eric Royal at the podium. I'm not Coach Royal. Uh, that's me guys in the back right there. Um, I'm Coach Gordon, Josh Gordon, defensive coordinator for Ferndale High School. Man, I am excited to be back in somewhat normal what we doing, fellas. Last year was really, really shaky, all over ups and downs with everybody, man. I'm excited to see some of you guys, man. Let's get after it. Um, starting off, man, we got a good core of guys coming back. We got three, three years starting guys coming back. Jordan Malone, who's not here right now. Keyshawn Shepard and Josh Cook, all three three year starters for us on varsity, man. We're excited to be here, man. We're just, I'm getting these guys to the floor and let them talk a little bit. Joshua McCook, O-line, D-line. Jerome Ellis, O-line, D-line. Keyshawn Shepard, O-line, D-line. Like I said, man, we just want to thank Rochester for hosting this, and good luck, and everybody stay healthy. I apologize there. That was Ferndale's defensive coordinator that spoke um, at the media day proportion of it. I mean, like, the strength, obviously, is up front. And they've got some questions in the skill positions. Of course, that's a really interesting, interesting um, situation they're developing there for Ferndale. But I did catch, catch up to D. Eric Royal at the po at, for the interview. I got Ferndale coach Eric Royal here. Of course, um, last of course, um, last season had a nice bounce back year for you guys. I'm getting the playoffs. Um, yeah. obviously, um, talk about your quarterback situation. How that's brewing? Um, I, actually, I, I'm very optimistic about our quarterback situation. Now we have a young man named Darnell Bates who is leading the uh, the race right now. He is a uh, showing very good signs for us this year. Um, I'm actually encouraged. I wish he would have. Uh, he didn't play last year because of COVID. His mom took him out, but he's returning now and. If he would have played last year, I think he would have challenged us for the starting position. Um, he's looking really, really solid for us right now. So I'm, a, I'm very encouraged about the uh, production we're going to have for our quarterback position. Talk about your skill players. Obviously, of course, that's been a concern for you guys coming in the year. Yeah. Um, what is that expectation for you? Um, now, now that, that is one of our big question marks. We're going to be young on the edges uh, in the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball. Um, but I think with the strength that we're going to have up front is going to allow them to operate a little bit more freely in bigger holes and, you know, less – less demand on our, our younger skill guys because we have a tremendous amount of talent coming up front on both sides of the ball that are big, athletic, they can move. I'm very encouraged about what we're going to be able to get from up front on us this year. What are your expectations this year, Coach? Um, I expect to compete for the league like we always do every year and try to get the highest playoff seed we can. Thank you real much, Coach Royal. Thank you. This is another team I'm looking forward to watching. Of course, Ferndale picked to be the top team in the coaches' poll. Um, really interesting how that's going to look this year. Um, when you look at the schedule for Ferndale, they do like to play a tough non-league um, competition opponent every year. And they do get that on October 1st with Wall Lake Western, which should be really interesting, of course, going up against Corey Chiroch, um, who is now over there at Wall Lake Western. They open up the year at Royal Oak. Um, it's a rivalry game. Of course, Ferndale's had their way with Royal Oak in the past. Um, Troy Athens. Uh, that was a really close game last year, Adam Ferndale. Now, the, now they got to return the favor going to Troy to take on Troy Athens. Um, September 10th against Troy. That's going to be really interesting there in that one there. September 17th, they take on Berkeley. Um, this is going to be, I think, a really, really good game out there at Ferndale between them and Berkeley. I think it's going to be a great game. It's a rivalry game. I know the rivalry deep between the Bears and the Eagles. I've seen it from the days of football and basketball. Uh, so that'll be really interesting there. Uh, September 24th with Avondale. This one's going to be really interesting. Of course, 
We know that rivalry's been, of course, the road teams had the um, best of each, best of both worlds, but the last two years, the home team has won both meetings. We mentioned Wall Lake Western, that's gonna be a huge game for Ferndale. Um, Bloomfield Hills on October the 8th, um, that'll be really interesting there. Pontiac on the 15th of October, and then they close out the year on the 22nd with Farmington. Um, Ferndale, they got the league thing figured out. It's just the non-league. That's the big question I have with Ferndale coming into the season with them. So the, for the Eagles, if they want to make that next step, they have to beat some really good non-conference competition. And that starts against a really good Wall Lakes Western team coming up in the first week, say, of October. So I'm curious to see how the Eagles do this season. So we'll see what happens there with the Eagles. Um, let's go from Ferndale to Pontiac, of course. This is a team that's been 5-73 and 73 since 2012. Um, it's been really challenging. They do have a new coach this year in Ken Wade. Um, here he is at the podium at Media Day. Uh, coach Wade, a first season here uh, with Pontiac High School. Uh, excited to be joining the OAA. Uh, looking forward to the opportunity to try and rebuild, rebuild our football program. We've been in the dumps, and we plan on doing things, everything we do a different way. Um, starting with everything we do in the offseason that we've been working on. Um, Really want to change the culture where we're at, and we have a lot of guys that are buying in. I look forward to this opportunity. Um, with me today, I brought Charles White, senior, slot receiver, and also defensive back. Isaac Burrow, senior, running back, safety. Kanye Donaldson, freshman, will be our starting quarterback. Jermaine Taylor, wide receiver slash outside linebacker. Um, we're super excited about this season. As I said, my first opportunity to be a head coach in the high school level. Um, we have a lot of positive things going on at our school. We're building a brand new stadium. Come October the 8th at our homecoming, we'll be playing the first home game under the lights on campus at a Pontiac High School in the history of the city. Uh, big event. We're looking forward to hosting Farmington that week. Look forward to seeing you guys. Um, looking forward to all the challenges ahead. And uh, if we keep staying the course, putting solid character, high character men around these guys, teach them how to be men and football players, we look forward to turning this program around. And uh, to everyone else out there, stay healthy, have a successful season. Glad to be joining the conference. Coach Vernon, thanks for having us. I'm very curious to see what Pontiac has. They're going with the freshman quarterback in Kanye um, Robertson. Um, I'm curious to see what Pontiac is going to look like this season. So I went more in depth and had an interview with Coach Wade on how everything's going for Pontiac. I got the coach of the act, Pontiac coach, um, Ken Wade here, of course. Um, Ken, um, I know it's been really difficult, five and 73 since 2012. Um, how is the act, how, is, um, how, is, how has it been this off season for you at Pontiac? Uh, we're getting a lot of buy-in. We're starting to build our numbers up a little bit. Uh, we know we're starting from the bottom, so we're pushing the guys and making them understand that we're doing everything a different way, uh, trying to establish a culture around our program, uh, put high-character men around them, trying to get them to do the right things on and off the field. So uh, we've got a lot of buy-in, and, and I've, with connections that I've had with the city through a youth ball that I, before I left to go to Water Vermont, I've, uh, so I know some of the kids that are in the school, so we're trying to tell them they don't need to be strictly wrestlers, strictly basketball players, that they can be football players as well, and we're looking for the opportunity to try and teach them and make them a better team. Talk about um, your quarterback situation, of course. You did mention um, last season you did have um, Charles as a quarterback last year. Now he's converted to wide receiver. So um, talk about your quarterback situation. Oh, we have Charles and John, who are both seniors that both played quarterback at some points last season. Um, we want to use them as more of our athletes. Uh, it also gives a chance. Our, we have an incoming freshman, uh, Kanye Donaldson. He's been, uh, done a lot of good things for us. He's been doing all our seven-on-sevens. He's been the quarterback the whole time. Uh, well, obviously, we're working our backups in practice, but we, we, we look forward to the opportunity of working with him for four seasons and uh, being able to build with him through, as we build the program. So that's a positive thing. And being able to use Charles and John at, a, at a weapons for him will be able to help us out, too. What is your expectation this year, Coach? Compete every day, every play, in every way, and just keep getting better. That's what the comp the, and we. I don't. I know that we're uh, starting from the bottom. I know we haven't won a game in three seasons, and like you said, five and seven years or something, whatever it is, every over the last. Uh, uh, but our expectations is to be competitive every week. Uh, we're in the lowest division here in the OAA, and uh, I know there's room for improvement with us. And if we keep building our numbers, do it the right way, I expect to be competing every week. Thank you real much, Coach. Absolutely appreciate it. Yep. I apologize hey, for the um, name of the um, freshman um, for Mr. Donald. It's Mr. Donaldson, not Robertson. That's why I apologize for the name. Um, so I'm curious to see what Pontiac has this upcoming season, obviously. Um, looking at the schedule, it looks favorable. I mean, like, even though they open up the year with Troy Athens, it's going to be really interesting there. 
Um, I'm curious to see how they're going to compete. I mean, I've looked at them. They've been better on seven on sevens. I mean, they've been playing much. They've been getting better each week. Um, September 3rd, they take on Bloomby Hills. It's going to be really interesting there. Um, curious to see how both teams are going to be very young this upcoming season. Um, September 10th against Avondale. It's a little bit of a challenge for them with, their, with Avondale having to be an experience. Um, September 17th against Stockbridge, of course, that one's going to be really interesting. I think that could be a good chance for Pontiac to, to get a W here. I really do. I mean, like, Stockbridge, really good in the past, but not lately, of course. They've had some down years a couple times. Um, September 24th, they take on Royal Oak. That's another game I could see a winnable game for Pontiac. Um, October the 1st, they take on Troy. Um, that'll be really interesting there. And then October the 8th, they take on Farmington. And then the 15th, they take on really tough to close out the uh, month of October, obviously, with Farmington, Ferndale, and Berkeley. Um, really difficult stretch for Pontiac in that final three weeks of the season. So, challenging road ahead for Pontiac, but it's if, what, what Coach Wade said. I mean, like, they just got to stay the course, be patient, and everything will work itself out. So, Pontiac, a lot of expectations, a lot of excitement for the Phoenix coming in this upcoming season. Okay, now we're going to take a break here. Um, we're going to talk the final three teams on the special OA football preview show. The Blue Edition. Prescription drug abuse is a national epidemic. The new in way to obtain drugs is through parents' or grandparents' medicine chests. Removing prescriptions from your cabinet is the best way to keep drugs out of the hands of our young people. We've got to work together to protect our teens, our seniors, and our environment. Clean out your medicine cabinet today. Please participate in Operation Medicine Cabinet and drop off your unwanted or expired prescriptions at one of our law enforcement drop-off sites in Oakland County. We can't ignore this situation anymore. Welcome back to the Foot OA Football Preview Show, the Blue Edition. I'm Sammy Termina here. Let's talk about the Ravens of Royal Oak. Of course, this has been a team that has been really been a mystery, like trying to find identity. Um, I mean, like, we don't know what their identity has been offensively, defensively. They've really struggled. Um, so when I look at Royal Oak this year, there's a lot of questions. So here is Royal Oak coach Ray McMahon at the podium. I'd just like to echo everything that uh, all of you have already said. Uh, thank you, Coach Vernon, for having us out. Uh, Athletic Director Dean, as well, for putting on this event. Uh, it's a great opportunity to showcase, uh, as Bud always said, the greatest sport on earth. So thank you for that. Um, we graduated 22 seniors last year. And while we graduated a lot, we actually returned just as many. We were rather young. Uh, we returned six starters on the, on the offensive side and five on the defensive side. Uh, we're excited to get going. Our offseason has been one of the better ones we've had, and it uh, really is because of the leadership of our two captains up here. They've taken over. Uh, they're the ones that are contacting the kids. They're the ones getting them out. Uh, and as coaches, you know, we can only do so much. It's once the players start to uh, buy in and do everything, and these two guys have done a great job, and that's why they're here today. Makai Jenkins is a junior running back and outside linebacker. Justin Wilson, senior tight end defensive Again, just excited to get started. Good luck to everyone, and uh, stay healthy. There are so many questions for Royal Oak. Of course, last season, Makai Jenkins, he played some time at quarterback, which turned their season around a little bit. Um, but I'm curious to see where this team is identity-wise. That is the big-time question I look at with Coach Ray McMahon's team. The schedule, not as easy as you think. Open up the year with Ferndale, of course, um, that is a rivalry game. As always, of course, um, Ferndale's had Royal Oaks number in the past. Um, September 3rd, taking on Troy. That'll be another interesting game, of course. Um, that is another rivalry game, of course. Um, Royal Oak and Troy separated by about by about five miles, of course, um, going down south of uh, Crooks. Um, and then September 10th, they take on Berkeley. It's another rivalry game. The battle for the, um, it used to be the... Um, I can't remember the trophy now, but I know they have like a new sign now on um, the battle um, for that one, so that'll be really interesting there. Um, September 17th, they take on Troy Athens. The 24th, they take on Pontiac, of course, that is at home. The first two games, Ferndale and Troy, those are on the road. Um, September, October 1st, they take on Farmington, that is on the road. Um, that is not going to be an easy game for Royal Oak. 
And then October 8th, they take on Avondale. Um, that is another interesting game there. And then October 15th, they take on Bloomfield Hills. And they close out the year at Frazier Corsum. Last season, that was a 34-24 win for the Ramblers over the um, Ravens. So I'm curious to see where Royal Oak is going to be this upcoming season. There's just way too many questions I mentioned earlier. Identity is the big time question mark with Royal Oak. There's some other question marks as well, but they've got to settle on a quarterback. They've got to settle on, there's a lot of things they got to settle with that team over there at Royal Oak, um, but they got to find identity. That is the big time question mark for Royal Oak this upcoming season. Um, let's go over now from Royal Oak to Troy. Of course, last season, of course, the past Troy was 2 and 16. Last year, they were 4 and 4, including an upset of Bloomfield Hills. They did return one of the best wide receivers in the state in Darius Whiteside. So I'm curious to see what this team's going to look like this year. So here's Troy coach Chris Frazier at the podium. Hi, my name is uh, Chris Frazier. I'm the uh, coach here at Troy High School. First off, I'm going to let the uh, young men here introduce themselves. Max Schaumburg, quarterback. Ethan Block, senior, running back, defensive back. Uh, Brett Dickerson, quarterback and O-line. Jose Manzanares, senior, D-line holder. So obviously we're excited for the season, but I'm going to take my time here to uh, thank all the young men here, whether you're from Troy High, whether you're from Athens, West Moonfield, whoever. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart because without you, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. You know, you guys are what make you know, our job is special. We get to come and see you all the summer. We get to spend, you know, some Friday nights together. We get to spend practice together. Without you guys playing the game of football, it wouldn't, it wouldn't allow me to do what I do. So we want to say thanks from the bottom of our hearts and good luck this year. Stay healthy. Thanks. I'm curious to see what Troy has this upcoming season, even though they're 6 and 20 since 2018. But there is some optimism. So when, it, when I talked to Coach Frazier about that optimism, he was very excited for the year. So here's Coach Frazier. I got Troy coach Chris Frazier here, of course. Um, coach, um, last season, of course, he had that postseason run, of course, including that upset win against Bluefield Hills. Um, talk about the strength of the Colts this year. Well, I think uh, our seniors this year are a uh, big strength. They're, uh, a lot of them were experienced from last year. You know, they, uh, they ruined, some, ruined some ups and downs, both with COVID and the season. So, you know, that senior class is going to lead us to whatever, you know, whatever we are this year. Talk about, of course, um, the um, pass, of course, has been really, really challenging for Troy. I mean, like, and then um, that, you hoping last season's postseason was a turnaround for you guys? Yeah, you know, obviously, you know, losing, you know, all the games in the season kind of stinks. But to be honest with you, the kids that I've coached, you know, from day one of joining the staff, is they're all good kids, you know. So those are the kids you want to compete with. Whether you win the games or lose the games, you just want good kids in your program, and that's what we have. So we have good kids, and, you know, it paid off last year. We had some wins. So I hope it's uh, – it continues this year, you know, it's it's a unique experience celebrating a football win Friday night at home, you know. It's things that uh, kids three years ago didn't get to do, so I'm glad that our, our staff and our, our players got to do it last year, and now hopefully with full stands this year, we can we can do it again. What is your expectation this year, Coach? We just want to compete every game. I don't have a, a set number of wins we want to do. We just want to compete every game, and, you know, we'll let the score decide itself. Thank you real much, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. They got some good pieces. I mentioned with Darius Whiteside obviously coming back. Um, curious how the Block brothers are going to be with Nolan and Ethan. Quarterback Max Stromberg. The strength should be up front, obviously. Um, they got a good kicker in Kishi Peichel coming back as well. The schedule is very interesting, of course. They open up with Avondale at home, of course. The Umbat and the Little Brown Jug, of course. That has been a really interesting game the last few years for Avondale. So curious to see how that game's going to go. September 3rd is a rivalry game, obviously. Um, so I'm curious to see how that will go um, with Royal Oak. Um, September the 10th, um, Ferndale. This one will be, I think, could decide Troy's season. I really do. I mean, like, the Eagles, of course, very good team. Um, Troy, they could be 1-1 one one or 2-0 and oh at that point, heading in that game. Farmington on September 17th on the road. Really daunting task there. Um, then they have a week five game with Dearborn at the Ford. Um, it's going to be really interesting there. First meeting ever between those two teams. Um, October 1st, they take on Pontiac. Um, week seven, that's a rivalry game with Troy Athens. The last three years, Troy Athens has been, out, Troy's been outscored by Troy Athens 104 to nothing. That is, a, that is something that coach um, Chris Frazier and the good folks at Troy want to change. Week eight, they go to Hurley to take on Berkeley, of course. Berkeley, Troy's been outscored by Berkeley 53-14 the last two years. 
And then week nine, they close out the year with Bloomfield Hills. That is at Bloomfield Hills, the same team. They upset in the first round of the playoffs. So a lot of expectation with Troy um, this season. Can they keep it up? Can they keep the momentum up? That is the big time question for Troy coming into the season is can they keep the momentum up? I mean, like, so curious to see where Troy's at, how they fit this upcoming season for them. Um, the last team in the blue this, for this year is their arch, Troy's arch rival called the, team, the school down the road called Troy Athens. Um, so when I talked to Coach Billy Keyes a couple weeks ago on the podcast, um, and he had, some, he had some nice things to say on media day. Here he is at the podium. Hi there, uh, my name is Billy Keenest. This is my fourth year as the head coach of Troy Athens. And like Coach Richardson said, uh, I firmly believe this is the best conference in the state. I'm very thankful to coach it. These guys are thankful to play in it. And to all of you guys, best of luck this season. Um, we were two and four last year, and we uh, had three of those losses. We had to lead in the second half, and we didn't finish the deal. So our word this year is finish finish everything we do. These guys have done a great job of that this summer with the workouts and seven on sevens. I could not be prouder of this group. So these are our captains and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Trey Vincent, running back, uh, uh, something back. And Naps, fullback, linebacker. Andre Shelton, senior, receiver, and DB. I'm very quarterback, safety. Thanks again, uh, Coach Vernon, for putting this on. Best of luck, you guys, and stay healthy. Troy's, Troy Athens is going to be very interesting to keep an eye on. Uh, Evan Bieber takes over quarterback, Trey Vincent, got Andre Shelton. Um, for a team that's been 7 and 35 since 2016 and only had two winning seasons since 2007, um, there's a lot to, to change with Troy Athens, but I feel like they're on the right path. So look at week one here when you look at the schedule. Obviously, they take on Pontiac to open up the year. The um, game September 3rd against Ferndale, that was a game where they had. Um, they had the lead late, couldn't close out the deal against them. That is at home for them. Um, September 10th, they take on Farmington. That's another interesting game there. Um, September 17th, Royal Oak. Um, that'll be another really good game there, of course. And then September 24th, they go to Hurley to take on Berkeley. Um, a lot of interesting storylines there. It's Billy Keenis' return to Berkeley. He used to be the coach of the Bears there. Um, so it'll be really interesting there. Um, October, the, and of course last year's game was really close between those two teams. Berkeley edged down a win at Athens a year ago. And then October 1st, Bloomfield Hills. Here's see how that, of course that was another game that, that made Coach Keenis um, sick to his stomach. That was a 2013 game last season. They lost to the Bloomfield Hills. Um, October the 8th, of course, um, they take on Troy. As I mentioned with Troy, um, Athens has really owned their um, arch rival. Outscoring the last three years, 104 to nothing. Week eight's a big time question mark for them. I don't know where, who they're going to play non-conference wise. Um, I, I'm really curious to see if anybody will step up to play Troy Athens. And then October 22nd, they take on Avondale on the road at Dick Byfield Field to close out the year. So a lot of expectations. If you want to watch more on Troy Athens, there's my podcast, obviously. I will post a link on the blog at sammysemicolontaminablogspot.com um, when I release the previews sometime next weekend. So let's look at, of course, the um, 2000, my projections for the OA Blue this season. Um, this is off the presses. Press off the presses, who are my favorites, who are my, um, who I think could have a really good year. Um, Berth, I know the coaches said Ferndale would win the league, um, and I, they're gonna be really good this year. I think it's a three-team race between Farmington, Ferndale, and Berkeley. Can't go either way. Can't go either way. Um, I think that these three teams have definitely have earned their keep in this division. Berkeley, I have them as a favorite at 8-1. Um, the 7-1 in the league. I think them and Fernia will share the league title this year. Farmington, 6-3. I'm a little concerned about with Farmington. Just some questions there. I'm curious to see how um, the transition is going to be from Coach Albright to um, from, from um, Coach Sorokas to Coach Albright. Very curious to see how that goes. Athens, I think I really like Troy Athens. I mean, like, I think that they got, I think they got enough experience offensively. Um, I really like where they're at this year. Um, Avondale, I'm not trustworthy of that team yet. I mean, like, I know they were picked second by the coaches. I'm not too fond right now. Not really too fond right now. Um, Bluefield Hills, I think that, um, I think they're going to have some struggles this year. Um, 
Troy, uh, I think they're going to be better, but but I just think that, um, you know, I think they're going to be three and six this year. I just really look at there. But Pontiac, the team, I'm, I think they can win two games this year. I really am high on Pontiac. I like what Coach Ken Wade has going with that program there. I'm curious to see where they're going to be at going forward there. And then Royal Oak, I, like I said with them, identity. Identity crisis for Royal Oak. Um, that's a big time question mark for them going forward there. Um, here is my top 10 rankings is fresh out the question to start the year. Um, I got, and from the blue division, I'm really high on Berkeley, as I mentioned, of course. And then Farmington, I have them at 10 to start the year. I was really leaning Farmington, Ferndale, they're right there with each other. I think when you look at the blue division this year, it's gonna be a really good division. I'm looking forward to seeing how the blue looks this upcoming season. A lot of challenges coming up. And this is a division to definitely watch and keep a very close eye on coming in the season. Okay, now everybody, I'm gonna sign it off here. Um, the white will be next week, and then the red in two weeks. So stay tuned to, to more editions of the OA Now Football Preview Show. I am Sammy Tamina, signing off here, and good luck to everybody in the OA Blue this season. Good luck, take care, and God bless.